Welcome back, folks. Another week, another LNG main event. We've been having a lot of fun with this. And we have a big one here, a famous match that actually has a little bit of LNG lore that I was thinking about earlier, shoot, which we'll get into shortly. But firstly, how are you today, pal? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Very good. Always excited to be watching some old pro wrestling with you. You know, this is a fun deal that we do here. So Very much so, yeah. I'm pretty fired up. Now, before we get into all explaining that lore, shoot, tell the folks what match we have lined up for them today. So we are watching the Midnight Rockers versus Buddy Rose and Doug Summers for the AWA World Tag Team Championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, aired September 2nd, 1986. Taped August 30th, 86. Showboat Pavilion in Las Vegas. ESPN. Indeed. It's kind of a... It's not an era or time that's like remembered fondly necessarily, but it's a really interesting snapshot of the wrestling television space at this point. Um, and this is one of the famous matches. Now, I don't know if you know the lore I'm referring to, shoot, but on the memorable Grinathon that we did, um, this was a match that from about hour six through hour 12, we said we were eventually going to watch, and then we never did. Yeah, uh, pal, Alex showed up and we kind of went off in different directions. So, in many ways, we're paying off a long ter- long-term storytelling is what I'm saying, shoot. You know, for we we're, we're concluding some business. But what do we know here? What do the people need to know? Obviously, the central attraction, if you're just like, you know, not a particularly big, you know, fan of old school wrestling, Shawn Michaels is going to be kind of central here. But there's some, there's some moving pieces, shoot. Try and include the people in best you can. So, this is 20-year-old Shawn Michaels very early into the run. They've been in the AWA for about six months here, I believe. Um, This is a pretty well-known rivalry, feud, Mm -hmm. whatever term you want to use. I'm not going to pretend that I can recap the thing because I don't know it that well. I know they have three pretty high-profile matches. Um, We're definitely going to do future episodes on at least one of them, maybe both, if I can find the video. Um, This is probably... um, I don't want to exaggerate it because we don't know 100% for sure, but it feels like this match here is the one that kind of put them on the map and on the WWF radar. Um, Famously, they go there and they get fired within like two weeks, but then they go back (laughs) and and really start their careers there. Um, So, yeah, this is kind of – from cage match, this is like the first big-time Rockers tag team match. Mm -hmm. Um, that may not actually be true because I'm sure they had some good stuff in like little territories where you don't, right. it's not on cage match, but as far as well-known and this is the breakout match for the Midnight Rockers. It's also a particular type of match. And once, you know, without getting into it, we'll see it once we kind of watch it unfold here, but it's a very particular genre of match that is very famous in terms of the way it kind of, uh, visually plays out, yeah. I guess we'll say, and we'll, we'll let that develop. Um, you know, and then we'll probably loop back at the end and kind of put a bow on some things because, it's always cool. I mean, I don't think either anyone would accuse you and I of being like Shawn Michaels super fans, but obviously he's one of the more significant workers ever. It's always cool when you can kind of fill in the gaps in terms of these early significant moments for a guy's career, right? It's always cool. It's very interesting too because I actually was kind of a Shawn Michaels super fan go. when I was younger. I think I've mm-hmm. like I quit watching after he won the world title because I felt like wrestling had ended. Like that was the Season finale. Finale. Yeah. yeah. Um and then, I mean, I'm still, I prefer Bret Hart, but I'm still a big fan. Um, yeah, we've gone a little bit far in the other I think, direction. exactly. <laughs> I think we've overcorrected. Um, so, yeah, this will be fun. I've, I mean, I've seen this era, Shawn Michaels, some, but I haven't seen yeah. this specific match. I've seen quite a bit of WWF rockers. One of my I've favorite seen, teams ever. I've seen hardly any. I've only seen, like, clips of this because it's a famous match in the very nerdy circles that we often run in. But, yeah. Nonetheless, that's enough kind of leading for now, folks. The link to this matchup will be below in our description uh, for the very video. So pull it up now, and we're about to watch some wrestling. So if you pulled up the video, shoot. Please be honest with me when I count this down here. We're going to go play in five, four, three, two, one, play. I'm excited for this because, again, in fear of spoiling the way this is going to play out, it's a very uh, – it's the kind of matchup – you know, in kind of reputation that I've generally have a lot of fun watching. <laughs> yeah. In terms of its flavor. Again, this setting is, um, it's an interesting time for the territory, brother. Fair I, kinda, I personally, I kind of love it. Yeah. The content is not good enough probably, but I, I genuinely love the showboat. I love the look of it and the setting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm kind of in the minority on that, but. Well, I just think it's because obviously they were such a powerhouse in yeah. the times before this. 
this was their kind of it was like a, a slow, steady decline for them though this yeah. time, right? It's this is still when they're doing like they got fifteen. I don't remember how many it held, but there's right. you, you can see the crowd's pretty solid. Oh, yeah, yeah. it definitely starts to drop. Yeah, and it's also this match is famous for the heat too. So like yeah. we, you're gonna have a hot crowd. It's not like it's gonna be, you know, some sort of cold territory in this particular setting anyway. So it this is. appears, yeah, this is a uh, this is not from the original broadcast. Um, as we can tell from the graphics on the screen there. Mm-hmm. But, um, Rose and Summers. Um, I'm not super familiar with them. Oracle talks about Buddy Rose all the time. He does. Uh, <laughs> but I definitely, I, I know enough to know they were a very good tag team, as we haven't actually mentioned, but I'm sure you've noticed Sherry Martell is in their corner. Mm-hmm. Um, Sherry's very young here as well. It's a moment in time, brother. I mean, Sean yeah. and Sherry is saying we, you know, circle back to many years down the line. I yeah. mean, honestly, what year is that they do that run? 91? Look at the question mark on Playboy, buddy. Did you see that? Yes, respect. It was in 91. They, yeah, they 91. Yeah. yeah. It's not that far away, really, in the grand scheme of things, how time works nowadays in wrestling. <laughs> and that's an interesting thing because, I mean, obviously, I didn't know that history at the time. Right. But it's a really, I mean, it makes perfect sense in retrospect. That they were very familiar with each other from, because mm-hmm. this is a long feud. Yeah. Um, it goes at least it goes oh, six seven months. Um, this is like like an archetype matchup, right? Like yeah, very traditional baby faces, very traditional heels. Um, this is kind of the ma- kind of matchup that tag team wrestling is like built on in a weird way. Um, Obviously, there's more famous examples of what I just described than this one. This is a famous one, don't be wrong, but it certainly is a a familiar matchup. If that makes any sense, it's a like it's a great um, like it makes all the sense because you know the Playboy Buddy Rose, Pretty Boy Doug Summers, um, yeah. their gimmicks are like they're pretty and handsome, but they're actually not. And then <laughs> yeah. they're wrestling the young guys who actually are, um, yeah. and that's not really their gimmick. I mean, kind of is, but they're like, you know, they're supposed to just be cool rocker guys. And that's, mm-hmm. that's beautiful pro wrestling. It makes like, this, this feud makes all the sense in the world. They're perfect. The crowd is hot. Man. Yeah. We've talked about this in a lot of the matches we've done so far, but it's always, it's always a, a telling sign when you hear like the screams, you yeah. know, and the, the roars. The Midnight Rockers are a fascinating concept for me if like oh, if wow. AWA could have kept them and yeah and i don't know you build the territory around them but they could certainly have been like an integral piece of trying to modernize you the maybe yeah. you could have right that stuff yeah, was I mean, very Sean, um, eventually definitely you could have probably not at yes. this point in time but well it's interesting right because some territories were very much defined by tag team wrestling others were not um based on obviously the the core piece of, of this particular territory. I don't know if you could have done it with them as a team, but Sean is it like on his own, obviously eventually you get there because there's some places tag teams could be the top act on territory, you know, oh, yeah. like, Carolinas was famous long before people think of that territory. It was like an actual tag team territory. So it's interesting about even from that perspective, honestly. And I know we've talked about this on other shows, but it's like, I don't know at this point in time, but there is definitely a long stretch of time where the perception is Marty Jannetty's the star yeah. of the team, yes. which is hilarious in retrospect. Mm-hmm. Um, even though Marty Jannetty is honestly better than he probably gets credit for, which oh, for sure. in many, yeah. many ways is his own fault. But um, yeah, but there's listen to this. Oh, no, it's crazy. It's it's rocking. Stomping their feet and it's literally uh, rocking. Oh, yeah. my oh, goodness. Cool. Super kick. The psychology of those kids back in the day, brother, you know, it should be a finish. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The uh, be interested. I would love, like, I don't really know a whole lot about Sean's. This Chris Adams was like, yes. I really wonder if that's where Sean got the super kick from. It'd be interesting. I'm not sure. Um, when Chris Adams shows up in world class, it's striking how different he works than everyone else. Um, here we go. I think yeah. I think some of those stylistic choices are about to become prevalent yeah. here, I sense. Um, Fascinating camera work there. You've got to respect it, right? 
Well, the guy actively trying to hide himself, and the cameraman goes, "Nope, <laughs> shoot him." <laughs> well, back then, of a decent majority of the crowd would not have known oh, what was going exactly. on there. They thought he was just laying there. Exactly. Oh, do you let you hear the women gasp? Mm-hmm. Here we go. I did not realize we were going to get into this particular part of the match so swiftly. Did you? Yeah. No. We did like thirty seconds of shine, and they cut him off and hit, you know, posted him into the uh, the buckle there. They haven't gotten a good shot of it yet. There it is. There we go. Oh, good lord! Is that first one? Yeah. Shin was like bounced off his head, man. Sherry's AWA career is fascinating too because she's both the valet and the women's champ. I don't know if she's the champion here. Um, yeah. But there's a long stretch where she's like a manager and the women's champion. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a – obviously, I'm not super – They it seemed like their women's division was kind of just we pick a champion and we showcase them, and there's yeah. not, not an actual division. We just bring in women yeah. for her to just wrestle. Because yeah. Yeah. Sherry was a big – I mean, it's very easy to look at their roster, even in like '87 when they're really starting mm-hmm. to die, and look and look at that roster and be like, "My God!" Like, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of that stuff's, you know, like history frames guys a certain way, right? In some cases, like when you look into the when you look beyond the surface, you kind of go, "Oh, I get it." But yeah, I also think more than that, it was just a matter of circumstance. It was just it was stylistic choices. It was the way they were presented on TV, so on yep. and so forth. And some of them just weren't ready to be. Exactly. I mean, the best know, they, example it was that before is, they were. And this is, you know, going slightly off topic while they beat up poor Sean here. Um, and people are screaming and jumping up and down. But, you know, the best example is WCW at the end, right? How often yeah. do people say, look at that roster at the end? It's like, yeah, but l- look in it. And it's you kind of quickly go, oh, that ain't Lex Luger from 1997. That right. ain't so on and so forth, you know? Look at that. What a great oh. visual that was there. Yep. I'm much more familiar with Buddy Rose than Doug Summers. Me too, but someone's just oh, popping me incredibly. Very much, spot. yeah. Stomps to the head. Look at him talking trash. Here we go. One punch to the gut, and the place came up. And Sean, see this, and Sean's worked pretty much the whole mm-hmm. match so far, which is very much like I don't honestly remember if that ever flips. I feel like it doesn't. I feel like it's always they kind of build to Marty's hot tag. Um, but now, looking back, you would absolutely assume it would have been the opposite. Um, yeah, but they didn't even do like he's been the whole match, right? Oh yeah, I don't think Marty's yeah. been. Yeah, Marty hasn't. They did. Yet. Shine was so thin; it was like yep. he just did like he had a couple roll ups and high flying sequences, so to speak. <laughs> Someone is stomping with intent, man. Good lord, this is uh, I didn't like do actual statistics, but. They are very familiar with each other already at this point. You can tell. Especially Sean and Summers worked singles matches a lot on the loop, which I assume probably Marty and Buddy did as well. Because yeah. um, that's an easy way to get two matches on the card in one night. Um, but they this also work just... tag matches a lot. Tremendous display in terms of like giving fans hope spots and fighting yeah. from underneath and not just laying and dying, you know? <sighs> Sean's crawling. He's punching. He's just trying, you know? Sean's already great here. Well, great's yeah. probably overstating it, but he's he's great for this particular role, definitely. Yes. You can already see the pieces that made him one hundred percent, yeah. What he was. You said he was twenty? So I'm looking at it because I they in the comments it said he was twenty, but then on commentary they said twenty two. Um oh. so now I'm trying to find out for sure. Oh nice jab. Look at this. Sean's oh, Double down at the end of Rocky 2 there, brother. So he had just turned 21 here. There you go. Like a month earlier. My goodness. The women's screaming, man. It's crazy. People are like leaping up and down. It's... The visual itself is crazy. See how many people are just jumping and stuff? And yep. just... I genuinely am a big believer that the WWF did not get enough out of the Rockers. The yeah, fact well, they were never the tag team champions is just insane to me. Like, I know they were supposed to be, mm-hmm. in, but that's insane to me. It's a strange promotion when it comes to teams, man. Like, there are even yeah. teams that won the belts that just never felt at home there. I'm not saying that's the case with the Rockers, but, like, it's just different there, you know? Even, like, look yep. at the Steiners. Like, it was like, 
they were the, they were there, but it didn't really feel like it, did it? It's like a strange run where they yeah. kind of these guys, these Sean and Marty in the late '80s and Crockett would have been fascinating. Yes, it would. Um, would have been challenging in some ways too, because obviously well, yeah. there, would, there would have been some big competition. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's that, that's a, a feud I wish we could have gotten. Yeah, Rock and Roll yeah. Express, and then it would have been tremendous. Uh, have you ever heard on compare sale. them? It's really no. interesting because Arn's like one of the only guys that's like worked. They had some really good matches with the Rockers, and obviously they had a lot. He had a lot of matches yeah. in a range of teams with the Rock and Roll Express, and he he was like the Rockers are way better, but the Rock and Roll Express are just so over that it doesn't matter. Yeah, he's like in terms of what they can do, the Rockers blow them away. Which and Sean Marty can, can do heel tight. work too, so that would I mean it would have yes. worked out perfectly. Yeah, they definitely would have been like the kind of petty young guys in that feud, right? Yep. Dude, the way they're bumping on these punches is like, oh, you know? Summer cell of, or was that bros, actually? The cell of when Sean got back in the ring? Yes. And he kind of went. Yeah, it was great. God bless pro wrestling, man. Tremendous. Look at these right hands. Yes, man. So, and Sean has still worked this entire match, as we said. He's. The thing that's intriguing me is, is this going to be like one act? Where they where Marty makes the hot tag and they go into something else, or are we going to build this whole match around the hot tag? Yeah, because well, here we go. Like, I think here we go. Here we go. So we'll find out. Now, oh, so. listen to that! Oh, <gasps> look at <laughs> that rule. People are jumping up and down. Look at yeah, that! That's what I'm saying, bro. It's crazy. That feed on the back oh. body drop, dude. There's oh literally God. people jumping up and down and pumping their fist. The, the pumping of the fist is like. Oh god. my god, he took the post. Yeah, and so I am not a and it used to be better guy. That but there was, are certainly that's... moments where you're like, we can't we don't get that anymore. No, we never will. It's fine. It's just is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Some things we've lost. The, the the innocence of that is just gone from, from yeah. the world. God, here comes Sherry. My God. Look at the <laughs> Oh, so this is what I was wondering. Like, do they go double heat? Oh, yeah. If, they're gonna, are they going to build to another? It feels like that's what they might do, right? Like a mini heat. Not like what they yeah. did with Sean, but they could definitely. Look at Sherry. Sherry was so good at this. She's just a great, just a great pro wrestling personality, yep. you know? <clears throat> wrestling, managing, whatever you need. Like, she's just great. Legend. Marty's already looking to tag Sean. One of my yep. favorite pr tag team wrestling tropes. It's even funnier when the baby faces are in control. Like the yeah. guy makes a hot tag, takes over, and he's like, back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sean crawling back up to his corner. Oh, my oh, goodness. Good Lord. Did Summers, um, has he got a little bit oh. of blood too, Summers? Because when he took that post, I thought he was going to come out, and I can't tell. I can't tell. He's covering his head. I can't. Oh, Buddy Rose fucking he's too tough. Did you see that? He just, the way he just redirected. Oh. So I'm pretty sure. My goodness. Did Marty blade while he was between Buddy Rose's legs? I believe so, yes. God bless, man. Respect. I thought that's I'm, what Buddy Rose was doing, was hiding him. I'm desperate oh. to see Summer's forehead here because he's like. Oh, yeah, he's bleeding. Yeah, he's he was like. Was he still operating there? Yeah. <laughs> On the apron? It looked like it, didn't it? I thought that's why he took the post, specifically. He looked great. Oh, this is... Oh, look good lord. Damn, he's done a much better job than I thought he had, to be quite yeah. frank. It didn't look that impressive from the hard cam, did it? No. Oh, Bro, this is... the chest, dude. Man. This is, like, this is the peak of... When you oh. when you have the right atmosphere, yeah, and you tell the right story, you don't really have to do that. Like they really haven't done that much. That's why, like, it's you know, wrestling's such a oh. unique beast. You know, it's like, like it isn't like you're grading the the execution of moves or the choreography. You know, yeah, it's not like a dance routine. This you can't, you can't judge this match in a vacuum of what they did. Because they yeah. were clearly in response to how hot the crowd is, and they've done it perfectly. I mean, it's 
this is definitely a perfect example of like a match you can't watch on mute. It would yeah. still be good, but absolutely it would. Yeah, but it's like the magic something. of it. And like I'm sure that you know you could argue well the reason the crowd's doing this is because of how good it is. But it's like wrestling doesn't work in a vacuum. Like they were fired yeah. up, but the bell went. You know, like right. it's a, that's what makes wrestling interesting. It's all kind of overarching and overlapping in that way. Look at oh, this. Look at, look at Marty. Yeah, Marty is incredible here, man. He's only been in. Oh, <gasps> that fucking ruled. <laughs> Look at, look at the look at the desperation. Oh, he's just throwing fighting. it everywhere. Oh, look at this. God, he's trying. He's got to try and get to a corner of some kind. He can't see anymore. The blood's so bad. So he's just trying. I to love get to... this. Did you see Summers holding up the corner there? He's yep. so exhausted. Look at the oh, desperation. The, the selling of the punches is is actually a lost yeah. art form. The sway yeah. sell. Marty is incredible here. Yeah, he actually really, really is. It's hilarious because we like you mentioned about the perception of him as the star of the team, and like we were both putting over Sean. Yeah, but like you watch this, you go, "Well, oh. I get it," you know. Yeah, the way he's operating with this like idea that he's not sure which corner's which is so great. Yep. Like he and yeah, and, and he's also better. doing it in a way where it doesn't come across hokey because that's definitely but, can happen. Oh yeah, he's not. Sure. It's not a comedy. <gasps> oh, fell oh. right back. In, and look at the cell. Yep, I messed up look now. At, oh. <laughs> wow. Sean's punch is amazing. Man. Yes, he changed his punch as he got older. Right, he yeah, used to like yeah. arc it more over. It's like a like an uppercut. It looks incredible. Yeah, he's both of the everyone in this match is throwing great punches. Yeah, he used to have to be able to though. This is vengeful part. on Sean's part here, man. Yeah. This is like look at this. It feels like he's really out for revenge for a wham to Marty. This is the kind of hot tag. Oh. It's totally different to the other one, right? It's perfect. It's breaking down now. Yep. Oh, there goes the ref. Well, in his nigh. My God. Oh. Damn, that looked like it was really physical. The way she went for yeah. them ropes. That was Marty, wasn't it? Whoever it was. One of the one of the young young men bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Marty. Oh. Oh. Well, that couldn't have felt good. What was the plan there? Abdomen first into the back of the chair. We got another ref. God, they're going to knock him down too, aren't they? Yep. God oh bless the goodness. Rockers wearing white here too. Oh, look there at this. Go. Yep. It's over, bro. Yep. Oh, look at this. What a hot match that was. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we have the, the Rockers post match promo coming. Oh, yes, throwing punches at the ref. Oh my God, oh. brother, this is art. Great, great match. With the blood. Oh, here we Greg go. Gagne. Greg is in. Oh my goodness. Oh, Greg. He slung his jacket in. Summers didn't sell it all either for that. Who else is there? Look, Greg. I'm trying to figure. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Amazing! What an incredible visual that is. The rock is there on the outside. Ref still laid out in the middle of the ring. There's another ref just getting back in. Yep. <laughs> just look. It looks like chaos. Mm hmm. Actually, felt like it organically boiled over too, which is so yeah. hard to actually pull off. As much as it's a finish, we see Wrigley. It's hard to really do well. So you, if you, they're not. I don't know if they're going to focus on it. Oh, look at this! If you, you may have seen Sherry um, helping Doug Summers up. Yes, I did. Yeah. And going out of her way to press his head up against her white dress. I don't Fresh even know if we're going to get a shot out of a shot of it, but. Like she was clearly like cleaning his head up against her dress to get blood on it. Look at Greg. <laughs> think Greg for that match sucked. Wait, really? I don't know. Do you think? Oh. We'll, we'll no, the curtain. I don't think so. Look, blood on the camera here. <gasps> I don't know who the those other two guys with Greg were. Greg was the king. Oh, Greg. <gasps> Oh my god.
Hold up. Oh, God bless. <laughs> so we had to kind of lay out there for that so we had to man we had to there was so much so much so many layers first we started with greg pro man which he said he just named a bunch of us and said i've never seen anything like we saw tonight yeah. so clearly what they were going for here and i think they pretty much accomplished it was they were going to take these young pretty boys and let you yeah. let them the men i guess watching respect them and realize they were tough mm -hmm. the women clearly already loved them you could tell from the reactions yeah. but they were very high pitched reactions that was a female okay. reaction so the whole point of this was to get your male audience to respect them mm -hmm. my another immediate takeaway was sean's delivery was already pretty dang good here it was it wasn't it wasn't like a mile away from the tone that he would eventually settle yeah. on either. I mean, obviously, at the height of the heartbreak kid, it would, he would have like certain quirks to it, but that was not dissimilar to the guy we saw on TV, really. Yeah. Which is fascinating because the, I like the big worry was that he wasn't going to be able to talk. It's yeah, like maybe maybe you guys should have just let him do that. <laughs> well, again, it's that thing of you know the, the difference between doing a wrestling promo and doing a thing where you say your nickname and stuff hundred times. Yeah. Right, that's all. He wasn't very colorful there, I guess, would be the concern, right? right? Marty was uh, Marty interesting. was, yeah. Marty was Just something there. Listed four injuries and said, we're going to stop till we get to the top, bro. That's classic pro wrestling, though. It that is. That was great. Wasn't like that a... Amazing. Not a technical classic, not... But that's the kind of pro wrestling that I love. We still yeah, get it's... we still get bits of that now, but we're never going to get something exactly like that again. We get like a hybrid. Like you're never going to get that atmosphere again. Yeah. But we have. There are teams that do like love letters to that stuff, but can also mix it with like the the you know the the offensive stylings of today. So you get yep. kind of a a blend. Um, at least we can say tag team wrestling. It feels more popular now than it has been. I would say the last five years of tag team wrestling are infinitely better than the prior 15. Oh, 100%, yeah. I mean, the 80s was a great time for tag team wrestling, right? 90s, 2000s, 2010s, less so. So, I don't know. It's interesting. I think sometimes part of it is wrestling's needed to retrain its audience. That tag team wrestling could be like a big deal. That's like I went... You know, as a kid, I loved tag team wrestling, and then I reached a point where I didn't care about it because they conditioned me not to care about it anymore. And now I'm remembering why I loved it so much. Like mm -hmm. tag team wrestling at its best is like it's hard to top. Oh, it's my favorite. Yeah, it's my absolute. I mean, I what I love about it most we got a story there at the end with with Martin and Sean and him like protecting him. You know, is if you watch tag team wrestling with the famous you know mystery casual fan whatever, but they're saying human to the idea of a team, right? That everyone yep. can relate to. Where it's two brothers. Where there's two friends, where there's two enemies that are trying to coexist, quote unquote. But everyone can understand, has tried to do something with someone they love and or hate. And you have those great moments, like where guys take a bullet for their partner or betray their partner or whatever. And it's like you can relate to that on a human level. Um, and my favorite thing about tag team wrestling, honestly, is that for all the you know years we've gone by. And while there are some tag team matches nowadays that are just friend, you know, frenetic thrillers, which I love, generally the tag team formula can only change so much. Right. Which requires true art and craft to make it special. You know, then now forever. Like that match in terms of layout, while you might not get that level of blood, perhaps, that's still the same core structure that you see every week on TV now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just interesting to think about. So great, great match. Any kind of Closing thoughts on that time, that I'm, match, so on and so forth. I'm very, very excited to continue to, to dive into this feud now. Yeah. Um, we will definitely 
Um, visit that cage, the cage batch, which is the next big one, which I believe is Christmas Day. Um, soon. It's not going to be next week, but we will get to it pretty soon. Because um, mm-hmm. I'm very excited to yeah to see Probably all the next month, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it is interesting to wonder, you know, as we were talking earlier, maybe, just maybe, if they'd have kind of fed the hot hand there and and uh, gone in a different direction, maybe that that team could have done something for the territory. Feels unlikely, doesn't it? But yeah, it's an interesting scenario to play. What do you think? Gut feeling? Does it make any difference if they really go in that direction? With who was running it, probably not. But man, <laughs> it's hard not to see the reaction there from the crowd there and just wonder, like, yeah. man, could you have really tapped into something here? And maybe because like. And this is probably just an incorrect thing in my mind, but I envision like the AWA crowd is like old dudes. Well, in that particular building, I have only seen it be aggressively quiet old dudes. Yeah. And, and that was buildings. like, there was yeah, a lot of women cool. in that crowd. That was um, very similar to like the type of crowd you would see at Sportatorium, like much more um, mm-hmm. diverse than maybe even you see sometimes now. Um, yeah. It felt like a happening too, right? Yeah, like saying, it really did. I just... will say I'm slightly concerned though, because you know we're through five episodes here of LNG main event, and I don't want to make a, a rival out of Greg Gagne, but we've done two episodes of, and we've just we've concluded with an extended portion about how this may have <laughs> it must have been a mistake on the AWA's part. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Greg Gagne, we're gonna have to do a Greg Gagne match soon. Well, let's not get carried away. Um, <laughs> Incredible promo from him there. Just listed yeah. a bunch of wrestlers and said this was something good stuff. Art. Um he booked that match. match. He laid the whole thing out. Oh yeah. 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 We well, told the Rockers, you know, if you one of you sells and the other one makes the hot tag, you're probably gonna really love it. Yeah. You know, that was his thing. Um, he he got he got them together right before they went through the curtain. He said, Just listen to me here. Blood. <laughs> Blood. <laughs> I will say I am blown away by how quickly they started bleeding in that match. Yeah. Am I wrong in saying that that felt like that in its own way was tearing up an imaginary like wrestling playbook? They yeah, in some in ways, for seconds. sure. Yeah. Fucking ruled. My takeaway as we wrap up here, honestly, was I want to do more of the series, but I also want to do a little bit more of just Rose and Summers as a team because, yeah. man, were they impressive there as the veterans, weren't they? Yeah. This main Incredible. event thing is slowly just going to morph into Joe and I watching old wrestling. That's all this is going to be. <laughs> I We're mean, just going to find people we like and just dive into them and pop huge. Yeah. Well, I mean, we intend to like the matches. So if we find yeah. guys that pop us, we can go further in those directions, yeah. right? So there you go, folks. If you would like uh, access to the audio files of these shows a little early, you get them the Wednesday before they drop on YouTube at latenightgrin.com. Just $1 gets you that. Every other show we do in podcast form, he gets you the Late Night Grin on Thursday nights. He gets you the Burt. Tuesday through Friday. There's so much stuff that's exclusive on the paywall, as well as, as I said, the early access to this file. Um, so, lanelightgrin.com over there. Shoot any final thoughts, plugs, promotions, so on and so forth, pal. No, this is a blast. This, this is we're on we're on quite a roll here. We're we're we five are. for five. I like the, the the theme of like every once in a while, just reminding me that some of the wrestlers I pretend I dislike on the air, I actually think are very good. You know. Yeah. It's a necessary thing, I feel, for me. Yeah, it's so, time for you to kill that Marty Jannetty bit you've been doing. <laughs> Justice for Buddy Rose. All right. Uh, but folks, we appreciate you. Again, latenightgrin.com. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, so on and so forth. And we'll see you on the next one. Keep grinning. All hell. Enjoy this outro.